trail is a total dichotomy. It's, it's everything. It's, it's, a, it's a good microcosm for <laughs> the life we live and the world that we live in, in that you see really incredibly good stuff, you know, mind-boggling beauty. And then you run into challenges that you don't think you can overcome, or you run into, you know, wind and rain conditions that are just punishing you. That's the, uh, the dichotomy of being on this trail, and that's some of the, the beauty of it, is at times it's your best friend and it's a joy to be on, and other times it's just a son of a bitch because it's so hard. <laughs> I've lived in Colorado for most of my life now. I moved here shortly out of college. And uh, I'm 64 years old, I just retired this year. Looking at my bucket list, this was one of the first things to do was to try and do the whole Colorado Trail. The whole thing, from Denver to Durango. To mountain bike it, it's about 540 miles. The real tough part is how much altitude there is. There is about 75,000 feet of elevation gain, which is more than twice the height of Mount Everest. I think there's eight national forests, 16 mountain passes, so uh, it, it covers a lot of territory. So I decided this is the time to do it. My body's still in pretty good shape. If I'm ever gonna do it, it's gotta be now. So I'm really glad my body's held up so well over the years, you know, my joints are still good. In my younger years, I did a lot of high energy, risky sports, hang gliding, kayaking, river rafting backcountry skiing, and uh, now I'm a little bit older, so I want to stay a little more grounded, and I thought this would be a great thing to try. So I made that decision in spring of this year to get in shape and try and do the whole trail. The three words I would use to describe Dave would be adventurous, courageous, and loving. And I knew that he would want to achieve something big uh, in the early months of his retirement. I just didn't know what it was. Uh, but this is what, what he desired to do, and I knew that he, he could make it happen. I think it takes definitely a special kind of person, a person that has a lot of drive and a lot of sense of adventure. You don't just up and say, hey, I'm really fit. I'm going to go right across Colorado. He's just got all of those qualities, and there's just no challenge that he's not up for. Dave's always on some kind of adventure, and you know, age 64 sounds kind of old for some people, but uh, when you get there, it's not that old, and I think Dave was just kind of just pushing it to prove for himself that he could do this. This was the first time I ever did a bikepacking trip. It took me about six weeks to do the entire distance. And the way I did it was I broke it up into different segments because at my age, there's no way I was gonna do it straight through. The first half of the Colorado Trail journey was a series of out and back trips from Denver. So we'd go out for a few days, come back home, recharge, go out again. Dave's bike and gear weighed around 65 pounds. We estimate he was burning between 3,000 to 5,000 calories a day, depending on the terrain. So that took a great deal of food supply, plenty of dense carbohydrates, protein, water, and uh, he still lost 16 pounds along the trail. I made a little sign, and as I started the trip, every time I would get to a trailhead, I would uh, write the mileage to Durango. And that was also a way for me to keep patient to do this. Little by little, I'm gonna knock this thing out. Because I was able to take my time and break the trail up, really gave me the opportunity to enjoy a lot of it. I would really just ride and try and be aware of my surroundings and it was really rewarding to do that. Uh, I would notice things like the wildlife, notice what the clouds looked like, notice how green things were, 
Notice the rock formations. Notice the different colors in the uh, geology. And really notice how the trail would change from one segment to the next. And even within a certain segment, how you can go from uh, a really rocky, rough climb into a really smooth carpeted roller down through the aspen trees. Here we are, it's Friday, a lovely day. We're starting on segment seven of the CT. This will be the most uh, vertical part of the trail so far. It goes up and over the 10 mile range by peak six. About 3,000 feet of climbing today, but fortunately Copper Mountain's on the other side, but we'll be uh, running into the next segment, uh, segment eight. So it's a nice day, pretty stoked about this. So here we go, segment seven. Being out there on the trail alone with nature is a, a beautiful thing. Um, there are times when I would just feel like I'm not doing any work at all, that the only thing I'm aware of is that I'm breathing. And each breath would bring in the beauty and the joy and then let it back out again. Along the way, I got to meet a lot of characters. Most were hikers or bikers that you'd meet at the trailheads who were out for a day hike or to climb one of the 14ers. And they had some great trail names like Bear Bait, Scabs, Dr. Doolittle, or Purple Sprain. And as we swapped trail stories, I was asked why I had a dinosaur mounted on my handlebars. Well, it goes back a few years when I was snowboarding at Copper Mountain. I hit a jump, I did a toe grab and landed just right. And this girl says, nice jump. And then as I went by her, she goes, dinosaur. And that really lit me up. I thought, okay, you little twitch. <laughs> I can do as good a jump as any of you guys and I can be your grandfather. So that kind of put a little bit of fire in me. And so anything that uh, I think I can do at this age, I'm gonna try my best to do it while I'm still able to because uh, a lot of it is your desire and has very little to do with how old you are. So I fully embrace this dinosaur thing and that's where my mascot comes from on my bike, the T-Rex. And that, that really helped motivate me, you know, to get in shape and to uh, just keep pushing to uh, get this accomplished. One of my favorite segments really has to be segment eight because I got to do that with my friends and we all went together up to Janet's cabin. The hike was great. The snow had subsided enough that we could get to Janet's cabin within about five hours. Partied in the cabin, had a great time the next day doing a day hike. And when they headed back down to Copper Mountain, I just headed on to Camp Hale. I think it was important to him to do the, the Colorado Trail because he has this fire burning within him for adventure. And adventure with meaning. I think he ended up taking a lot of personal meaning from doing the Colorado Trail. And it satisfied something in him that he really
really felt he needed and wanted to do. The clock was ticking, right? If he was going to do it, now was the time when he still had all the physical strength um, to get it done. So at the end of the day, after completing uh, segment eight, we'd crossed over some more high Rocky Mountain terrain and felt pretty strong on the bike. And there was quite a feeling of exhilaration when you come down and you see your car waiting there in the parking lot. <laughs> This is the 25% completion mark on the trail. So that was really quite exciting and exhilarating to know that I've got 25% of the trail finished. I haven't hurt myself. And so far I felt really strong doing this trail. It was really fun and energizing to see Dave finish each of those and have stories to tell about what life was like on the, the trail that day and made me so proud to see him just finish one after the other after the other. And there was no doubt in my mind that he was going to finish the entire trail because I just saw that he had it in him to do that. I always felt just a sincere sense of gratitude and the sincere sense that I belong in all this, and that there is a grander plan, that this experience is really just a necessary part of my journey. A number of times I would just wake up and look out from the tent and see all the stars and kind of take in the whole grandeur of what this whole experience is about and where our place in the universe is. I feel really privileged, actually, to have this opportunity and to experience all this. I don't take it lightly that I'm able to do this and that God has given me all the uh, necessary tools and the strength to be out there doing this bikepacking trip and camping out and surviving and really enjoying the great outdoors. So about halfway through the journey, we took a couple of days to rest and recharge in Buena Vista. But once we got to about the halfway point, it was time to take on a different strategy. And so we ended up renting a camper. And I had never pulled a camper before. So this was a new experience, a bit out of my comfort zone, but it provided everything that we needed to be on the trip in the remote areas for three weeks. Some segments can be really good to you <laughs> and, and you feel like you're a world beater and you get this false sense of security that you can do the rest of the segments the same way. And then you get brought back to reality sometimes. And I made the mistake of underestimating the trail at times. And I would end up using a lot more energy and exerting myself a lot more than I ever expected to the point where I was so exhausted and so tired that I would hallucinate. There was one night I camped out when the wind blew hard all night and it kept me awake and I just thought, this is brutal. And the next day the wind was still blowing and I'm going across narrow mountain ledges and the wind is trying to blow me off the mountain. <laughs> and you're very, very aware that this trail can be quite unforgiving and the mountains can be quite unforgiving. That you really don't conquer this trail. You survive it, but you don't conquer this trail. But the one that, that really did me in was segment 24. And uh, I elected to do it backwards because of the shuttle that Cindy and I had worked out. So I started at the top of Mullis Pass, came screaming down into Silverton, up Stony Pass to the high point on the trail, 
and then down to the next trailhead where I was going to meet Cindy. Stony Pass was just switchback after switchback after switchback, climbing for miles. I figured in one day I climbed 4,600 feet. It was so exhausting. That was the part of the trail that really brought me to my knees. When I thought, I can't go any further. How the hell am I gonna keep going? Because as you looked ahead, you just saw more and more climbing ahead of you. You know, and you're at 10,000 feet, 11,000 feet, 12,000 feet. And you get to the top of Stony Pass and you're exhausted and you realize you still got another 20 miles to go. <laughs> so I was just exhausted. So I rode another four miles and, and camped for the night and got up the next morning and set out. I had been climbing all day, fighting the wind, fighting fatigue. By the time I reached Carson Saddle, I realized I was way behind schedule and I had a small window of time to reach Cindy before she left Lake City to tell her that I was not gonna make it to the trailhead that day. But there was no phone service, and so I'm looking at what I had to do, which was to climb clear up to the highest point on the Colorado Trail, because I knew I could get a phone signal up there. If I didn't get there by five o'clock, I was not gonna be able to reach her. I was so exhausted and tired and beaten down, it just brought me to my knees. The hardest times were when he didn't come as expected. And hours and hours and hours would go by and I would wonder, is he lost? Is he injured? It's dark outside. You know, is he okay? Do I need to call for help? So I thought, I gotta do this. So I started pushing my bike 10 steps at a time, 10, 10, 10, pushing up this mountainside to get up to Coney. Right about five o'clock, I made it up there. I had a faint signal, actually it was an extended bar on my phone. I called Cindy and made the connection to let her know that I was not gonna make it down to the trailhead that day. And I was so relieved to have gotten a hold of her Otherwise, you would have called search and rescue and sent them after me. You cannot underestimate how hard it can be on some of these segments of the Colorado Trail. So when I reached the top of Mollus Pass, that's where segment 25 begins. There's only about 80 miles left on this whole trip. So segments 25, 26, 27, 28 are the last pieces of the puzzle to complete the Colorado Trail. I plan to camp out two more nights and then meet Cindy at the finish line in Durango on the third day. The San Juan Mountains hold a special place in my psyche. I've been coming here since the 1970s when Telluride was just a little hippie town. And it turned out that those are some of the most beautiful and scenic parts of the trail. So we're riding around on the trail, way above Timberline, over these ridges and mountain passes. It was just a fantastically beautiful ride. The sun was out, there was no wind. You couldn't ask for better. And it's like you're in another world. And the only thing that you hear is the sound of your tires and your own breathing. Yeah. And you kind of get a little glimpse into eternity, into maybe the bigger meaning of life, and maybe why we're here. I know I had that feeling many times where you just feel so incredibly connected. And what is happening right here, right now is so spectacular. I've never felt more alive and more connected to the glory of God's creation.
Segment 28, heading into Durango, was the last part of this whole adventure. It is about 26 miles long. It is not particularly difficult, but it does climb over at least one pass before it starts to descend into Durango. The scenery, once again, along this segment was just spectacular. Uh, there was a lot of green marshy areas, and then we descended into aspen groves. And I cannot tell you the feeling of elation that I experienced when I finally got to Durango. <laughs> and there's, you know, just a few miles left. And uh, in particular, when you're there at Goody's Rest, and you could actually look out and see Durango down there, and you know there's only six miles left, and you're gonna make it. <laughs> you think about all the times that you didn't think you could make it, or the times you were hurt, or the times you had miles and miles to go, or you got lost to the point where you're looking at your GPS going, oh God, I gotta backtrack five miles. All of those things come rushing to you at the moment you realize you're almost there and it can be quite emotional, it sure was for me. And what makes it even better is when the one you love the most is there waiting for you. It was tremendous, one of the, the most emotional times of my life actually was crossing that finish line and seeing my wife Cindy waiting for me. <laughs> it just blew me apart with emotion when I saw her waiting for me. <sighs> you did it! I could not have done this trip without her because she was she was the one who took me to the trailheads at the beginning of the day and the one that picked me up at the end of the day when I was done with my ride. She was there every time I needed her. She was my encouragement, my comfort. She was my support system. So at the end of this, I think it did a lot for the relationship that Cindy and I have with each other. That was a really great consequence of doing this together with my wife. Looking back on this trip, it was really a spectacular adventure and things really went quite well, so I'm very grateful. Never had to fix a flat. I was really happy about that. Anytime someone takes on an extreme challenge like this, you have to call forth your best and give it your best and bring all your strengths into play. And I really saw that in Dave and the way he overcame some of the challenges that he faced. On top of the challenges, you do get those moments of tremendous joy. But the thing is though, there has to be the opposite for there to be joy. There has to be challenge. There has to be those things that are not joyful, <laughs> that are hard. <laughs> and when you get through those, you realize that those things have to happen. That has to be part of it. It can't all be just the joy and the fun and the exhilaration and the ease and the grace. To really get the whole picture of what makes this thing so exciting is, on the other side of that is the, the, the trouble, the bad weather, the wind, the miles and miles, the sore legs, the, the falls and the scrapes, the headaches, the dehydration. That's what makes it so remarkable and so much of a challenge is because all those things have to happen along with the joy to make this a real experience and that's what's so great about it. <laughs>